Good morning, YouTube or BookTube. This is Johnny. This is a Sunday morning here in West Michigan. It is February. No, it is not February. It is March the 3rd, 2019. And it is 68 degrees inside the hermit hut. I'm waking up to a new week. The first full week of March 2019. And uh, I gotta pick my wife up this morning. I drove her to work last night. And uh, supposed to get an Arctic blast another blast of severe winter weather but what I want to make the, a video about this morning is that this is March Mammoth and I didn't fully realize the uh, what it would take to read a mammoth book and what I chose is this commentary on the Epistle to the Romans, which is I get my Bible here. It's in the in the New Testament. I know that there are people out there in YouTube world who are not familiar with the the Bible, and so you have the Old and New Testament, and then you have what's called Old Covenant, New Covenant. And then you have uh, the four Gospels, and then you have the uh, the Acts of the Apostles, and then you have Paul's Epistle to the Romans, the Apostle Paul. Now we could go into the life of the Apostle Paul. We could go into his missionary journeys. We could go into you know all kinds of aspects of the life and ministry of the Apostle Paul, but. That's a whole another, another uh, series of videos. But you have the epistle of Paul, the apostle to the Romans. And uh, the point of this video is that I realize that if I'm going to really get through this commentary on the epistle of Romans and the New International Greek Testament commentary, by Richard N. Lonnecker, I'm going to have to really focus. I'm going to have to put a lot of my other reading aside and just f focus on Romans and reading this commentary. And one of the reasons why I want to do this is, as I have mentioned, that my wife is going to be gone for two weeks. She'll be leaving this coming Thursday morning for Seattle. Mercer Island to visit our son Josiah and his wife Hannah and our little granddaughter Marika Rose. She'll be with them for a week and then she's going to leave and fly to Denver and spend a week with our daughter Bethany, her husband Andy, and our three grandchildren uh, Louisa, Margaret, and Jack. So I've been thinking about how am I going to cope with this long absence of my wife and I figure what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend deep get dig, dig deep into the into Romans and I'm just going to really focus on Romans the next couple of weeks and probably until the end of March and maybe even going into April we'll see how the spirit leads and, but what I want to do is I somehow I was thinking how can I do a series of videos that just have Romans as the main subject matter and I thought maybe Ma March Mammoth Romans number one or number two number three number four but I I don't want to just make videos every single day on Romans I want to mix it up so I might do like use book hauls, I might do tags, 
I might just sit and just share a reflection or a meditation on something I've read in Romans or in the life and ministry of the Apostle Paul. Or I thought about doing a series, of, doing a video on how when I first got into Romans, I, I know, as you all know, who have watched my videos for the next last couple of years, that I became a Christian in 1970, Richmond, California. But I really didn't get into Romans until I think into Bible College, Reformed Bible College, which is now Kuiper College in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And that was around 1978. I took a class on Romans. I think I did. I know I wrote a paper on Romans. But back in those days, back in the early, early, back in those late 70s when I was in Bible college, I was, as you all know, I'm a Calvinist. I am a child of the Protestant Reformation, John Calvin, Martin Luther, and then I also have been heavily influenced by the 17th century English Puritans and the Westminster Confession of Faith, the Shorter and Larger Catechism and all that. You all know that if you watch my videos. So when I was in Bible college, when I would look at the Bible, when I would, and, and when I would read the Epistle, of Ro uh, the Epistle of Romans, the Epistle to the Romans, I always looked at it theologically. That's the point I'm trying to say is that I would look at Romans as a theological treatise and I would I would interpret it from a, a reformed theological perspective from a perspective of Calvinism and that that hermeneutics determined how I read Romans for many 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 years even up until I was in seminary now in seminary I took a class on Romans, I think I did, but I'm not, I can't remember, I have to look at my, my seminary, uh, my classes, but I, I know I took a class on the New Testament and we went through the Gospels. I know I took a class on Hebrews, a class on John, but I can't remember right now if I took a class on Romans. And I, but when I was in Bible college, we, uh, I, what I want to do is show the commentaries on Romans that we I used when I was in Bible college and seminary. But it wasn't really until I got out of seminary, out of Bible college, and when we moved up here to Holland, Michigan, I we start we helped, with ten other families. We started a small independent Dutch Reformed Calvinistic church. And they, everybody, these families all knew I had gone to Bible college and seminary, and so I, I volunteered to teach the adult Sunday school classes along with some other uh, with elders. I never was ordained an elder, <laughs> but I had, I, I, when I would teach Sunday school class, I would teach for a couple weeks, and then an elder would teach for a couple of weeks and then I would, you know, we would, we would, I don't know what the word is, we would take turns teaching. So I didn't teach every single Sunday. I'd do it for a couple of weeks and then an elder would do it for a couple of weeks and then I would do it for a couple of weeks. A couple of Sundays. But when, uh, when we first started the church, Messiah Independent Reformed Church, I taught systematic theology. But then I, I realized that, well, if we're going to really be a church that is in the Protestant Reformation, getting back to Scripture, getting back to studying and preaching and teaching the Word of God, the Bible. So I, 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 I approached the elders. The minister, uh, We didn't have a minister at that time. We just uh, had supply pulpit. And I said, I want to teach, teach the Bible. So they said, okay, then an elder would teach systematic theology. 
So then I really started getting into the Bible, and from and that was really when I really I really start reading. I really got into the Apostle Paul and looking at Romans and the Epistle of Galatians. Something I I had been a student of covenant theology for many many years, but as I got into studying. Pauline theology, Romans and Galatians, Second Corinthians, and I began to see that my theology was was wrong, not in every aspect, just in the area of covenant theology, and as I've mentioned also in the view of the Christian and the Torah or the law, and into the subject of sacraments, especially infant baptism that I couldn't find these theological doctrines explicitly revealed in Pauline epistles. So, as you all know, I, when I became, I was no longer in agreement with the confessions of the Dutch Reformed churches, the Heidelberg, the Belgic, and the Cans of Dort. And in the churches that we are members of, they're confessional. You have to appear to the confessions in order to teach or preach. So when I became, when I was no longer orthodox, according to the theological positions of the church, I could no longer teach the Bible. So, you know, to make a long story short, you all know we left that church. And I no longer preach, I mean, I no, long, I no longer teach the Bible. But I still studied the Bible. And that's why I'm today reading Longnecker's commentary on Romans. And you'll see, as you watch my videos, I have a huge Christian library. Because I love the Word of God. I love studying the Word of God and meditating upon it. And my desire is to live in obedience to the teachings of Scripture. So you see all these books that I'm always flashing in these videos. It's not that I, I'm not really an intellectual giant. I mean, I think I have learning disabilities. Uh, I've been around men and women who are very smart. Our children are very smart. Our, our children were, did very well in school, college, uh, high school. They're very, they all got uh, our oldest son, he has a, a master's and our second son has a master's and they're married to very highly educated spouses. And I have a bachelor's degree and a master's degree in, in divinity, but uh, when it comes to like liberal arts or I'm very deficient, I'm, I know the Bible, I know some theology, uh, I know some history, but I'm deficient in a lot of things, science, math, all kinds of subject matter I have no, no understanding of. But I do, and also as you see in these videos, I am a book collector. I always get comments that people who see my library, they see, do you have you read all those books? No, I am a book collector. But for many years, now I've been a Christian going on 50 years, and for, it's only been the last 10 years that I've really got into secular literature, collecting. When I first started getting into secular literature, I collected the books that I read when I was in high school, in my early 20s or I've always been aware I've always been involved in libraries and bookstores but I never had the time or energy to read outside of Christian literature and also as I've mentioned in my videos for many years we raised three kids I was working you know I was married I had kids we were involved in our, the lives of our children and there and I was working full time and I was teaching and I was involved in church involved in 
family life and marriage and also my own personal struggles with insecurities and depression and lack of assurance of salvation and just all a bunch of tons of crap and I didn't really have the energy to read outside of the Christian literature and but now the last 10 years I've been really I read I still read Christian literature in the mornings and then in the afternoons and I read other literature, you know, novels, essays, short stories, history, art history, books, biographies, memoirs. I'm interested in all kinds of things because I have the energy and the time. But what I want to do while my wife is gone for two weeks is I'm just going to focus on reading Lawn Necker. And reading books, you know, I show Preaching Romans, Four Perspectives, Scott McKnight, Joseph. These are the editors. These are essays from different Pauline scholars and how when you go through Preaching Romans, how there are different perspectives that how you approach Romans and how you interpret it. But to give it, I'm just going to end this video to show you kind of books I just went downstairs this morning in our library and just pulled out books like this. This is Moral Formation According to Paul, The Context and Coherence of Pauline Ethics by James W. Thomas. See, these are kind of books that are in my library. I have a huge library devoted to the Apostle Paul and Romans and Pauline theology. Here's another book I just pulled off the shelf down the lower level. Spirituality According to Paul. Imitating the Apostle of Christ by Rodney Reeves. And I've shown this book last year, N.T. Wright, Paul, A Biography. See, you know, I could, I could just pile and piles of books. And I've shown you this one by Lon Necker. Paul, Apostle of Liberty, The Origin and Nature of Paul's Christianity by Richard N. Lon Necker. So, you know, I could just stack you books on the Apostle Paul and Romans. And if you want to get a good overview of Romans without reading all these other books and commentaries, you should pick up Introduction to New Testament to the New Introduction to the New Testament Context Methods and Ministry Formation by David A. de Sevilla. And you find in this a summary, an overview of the Epistle of Romans. Epistles to the Romans, the God of Jew and Gentile. Then you have the setting and purpose of Romans. Uh, chapter headings, Paul's personal goals for Romans. And then you have genre and structure. He, go, he outlines each of the chapters and sections in Romans. It gives you a summary. Uh, the literary integrity of Romans, the message of Romans. So you can read this. Uh, faith in Romans, what faith is, what faith, whose faith is involved. Uh, grace and justification in Jewish sources. Uh, just all kinds of, it's a really huge section on Romans. And you just can read that and get an overview of Romans when you, instead of just reading a massive commentary or reading all these books on the Apostle Paul, you can just get an introduction to New Testament and just and read for like, you know, maybe 25 minutes, you get an overview of Romans. So those are the kind of books I have in my library. So what I'm going to do in these videos is I'm just going to like I said, I took a ton of books down the lower level yesterday. I showed you a bunch of books yesterday. But then I realized if I really want to get into Romans, if I really want to finish or at least get deep into this March Mammoth Epistles to the Romans, this commentary by Richard N. Lonnecker, I'm going to have to just zero in and focus. And when my wife is gone, in the mornings, read Lawn Necker and uh, 
and read Paul and Apostle of Liberty. And that's about it. And also, I, I'm, I am going to read reading, preaching Romans. These other books, I'm not. I just want to show you them to give you an example of kind of books I have on the Apostle Paul in our library. Yeah, and I might, like as I said, I want to. I don't want to do a video every single night or day on Romans, but I so I probably will mix it up. So that's what I'm talking about. And I do want to do a videos on like uh, when I looked, you know, as I looked at Romans over the years, different commentaries. I might dig out my Bible college notes on Romans, my seminary notes on Romans. I wrote I know I wrote papers, term papers when I was in college and seminary on Romans. I wrote a lot of papers in college and seminary, term papers, big huge papers. Uh, when I when I was in seminary, I had to preach every Sunday at different churches and I did preach through certain sections of Romans, sermons on Romans and So I just want to do in these videos at least a couple of times a week focus on the epistle of Romans, the apostle Paul and share my thoughts. So anyway, so yeah, that's what I read last night before I went to bed. I read Long Necker. This morning I'm on page 195 of my 2019 diary. Today is a Sunday, and uh, so I'll just sign off. Thank you for the comments. And until next time, also, also thank you for new subscribers. Feel free to comment, ask questions, and until next time, bye.